Hello, my name is Kate and welcome to the Local History of Northern Kentucky. Today we're going to take a look at some of the history of a couple of our local parks featuring images from the library's Faces and Places database. And the first one that we'll glance at is General Butler State Park. And this one is located in Carrollton and named for General William O. Butler, who was a soldier in both the War of 1812 and he served in the Mexican-American War. And this park offers uh, many activities, including biking, hiking, boating, fishing, and uh, there's also miniature golf, swimming, and tennis. And this park includes the Butler Turpin Home, which is located at the rear entrance of the park, and it was built in 1859. And this historic home and museum contains military documents, furniture, and other objects from the Butler family when they lived in the home. Um, in 1982, the park saw the official opening of Ski Butler, which was Kentucky's first and only ski resort. And these are construction photos from our collection of the project. And this one on the top left shows a view from the roof of the lodge where work was being done on the ski area. On the bottom, um, there are lift towers being erected. And on the right, crews were installing a new snowmaking pipeline. And this was near the beginner's area, which was called Nor Northern Dancer. And they were hoping for a mid-December opening date, but this ended up being pushed back to the first week of January in 1982. And the photo on the left shows visitors on the ski lift um, just after the resort opened. And over on the right, Rick Cruz, who was a ski instructor, um, he was showing his students how to do a bullfighter turn. And this is the front of the ski lodge um, and the entrance there was looking a little bit lonely and desolate and this photo was taken in late February of 1982. Um, the first season was much shorter than what was expected because the resort had to shut down due to money problems. Um, and they were unable to make payroll after the operator which was North Bank Ski Management at the time. Um, and that company was unable to secure a loan from the Kentucky Development Finance Authority. So after a difficult opening season, um, there were many changes and improvements that were put into place as it reopened the following year. And um, some of these included more convenient parking for guests, uh, there was a new, a large new practice area and um, a slope was widened for beginners to use. Um, and along with this, improvements were also made to the snowmaking equipment and a new company was set to manage the ski resort. And this image of skiers was taken in December of 1983. And here are some more photos of skiers um, enjoying the slopes. And the one at the top is of the um, general manager, and he was the ski and the ski school instructor. And his name was um, Addy or Addy Richter. And um, so to compete with others, other companies such as Perfect North Slopes in Lawrenceburg. Uh, the resort would offer promotions such as uh, weekday rates on holidays and half off prices on rental equipment and lift tickets for skiers who would stay in their lodge or cabins in the park. And uh, the Richter, the manager, he was quoted as saying that we want to give skiers a break and get them to come to our place. And so the resort continued to operate until the late 1990s before shutting down due to difficulties with maintenance issues. And there were major changes that were made to the park in the mid 1980s with renovations. And this first picture here is one of 
is at the new um, convention center at the park with the meeting room um, visible there through, through the door in the center. And this new space allowed for the park to accommodate meetings of 250 to 300 people. And along with additional meeting space, um, the guest rooms in the lodge were also undergoing improvements. And by spring of 1986, all of the rooms were completed and renovated, or had been completed and renovated within the um, last three years. And in the picture at the top, um, a worker is nailing a support between two studs to support a towel bar in the bathroom of one of the resort rooms that was being worked on. And the photo on the bottom shows the new completed room in 1985. And circling back to the historic Butler Turpin House, it's located within the park. These are some photographs of the home. And these come from the Kentucky Post Collection in Faces and Places. And again, the home was built in 1859 and was the residence of William Butler and his family. And the home is done in the Greek Revival style. And um, Although it's gone through restorations, many of its original elements do remain. And these include uh, woodwork, mantles, and a staircase. And that staircase is pictured there on the bottom left. And at the top, you can see the issues with the ceiling where there was plaster that had been in disrepair. And at the time that this photo was taken, the home had been closed to park visitors for about a, about a year due to these issues. Next to this, there is Eliza Todd Butler's parlor, and she was the wife of William Butler. And other interesting items in the home also, conclude, also include the ornate clock at the top, which came from France, and that was displayed in the dining room. And the piano is an early 1800s piece from London. And on the far right is the Butler family desk from the Victorian era. In 1994 brought the first annual General Butler Encampment Weekend, which was held at the end of April that year. And during this event, cannons were fired and people were dressed as Union soldiers. And Jerry Webster of Carrollton is pictured here and he's lining up a shot with his flintlock rifle. And Todd Osborne, also of Carrollton, was playing the banjo um, while Sharon Humble was spinning wool. And these photos are part of the 12th annual Kentucky Scottish Weekend, which also um, took place in May of 1994 at the park. And this festival included piping, dancing, and competition. And at the left, Alan Miller was showing three border collies, or he was demonstrating how the um, border collies can herd ducks, which was a traditional Scottish skill. And at the right, marchers were wearing kilts, at, um, and this was during the Scottish parade through um, downtown Carrollton. And moving to another park, um, this is Annie Hargraves Park, and it is located at the corner of West Robbins and Chesapeake and Covington. And um, this community park was dedicated to Annie Hargraves' name in 1981. And this picture um, was taken the day of the dedication. And, um, it comes from the Robert McGrain collection in Faces and Places. Annie Hargraves was a teacher at the Lincoln Grant School. And um, when she wasn't teaching, she spent a lot of time in the neighborhood park. And she would often organize uh, basketball and softball, softball tournaments for the neighborhood children. And she also served as a superintendent and Sunday school teacher for St. James AME Church in Covington. 
um, in there. And she taught night school and she helped to also form Northern Kentucky's Head Start program. And Annie Hargraves, uh, she died in 1976 at her school desk at the age of 70 while grading papers. That was just two weeks before she was scheduled to retire. Um, she was a very dedicated educator. And in an Enquirer article about the park, um, Ken Shields, who worked for Covington's Recreation Department um, during his college breaks, stated that she was a mother to the children at the park as well as a friend. And uh, Patricia Fan, another former student, said that during that time when segregation was uh, when segregation was the norm, she treated all of her students with love and respect. Uh, and pictured here are a few additional photos from the park's dedication in her name, including a view of the audience and a dance performance that was also part of the festivities. And for the next park, we'll be jumping over to Campbell County to AJ Jolly Park in Alexandria. And this one contains camping spots, a fishing lake, picnic area, um, horse trails, hiking, and other activities. And in 1959, um, a park in Campbell County was set to be established and the um, board was appointed by the county judge executive, A.J. Jolly Jr. to um, provide and uh, support parks and recreation areas in the county. And the golf course at the park opened in June of 1962, along with the horse stable. And then the rest of the park was opened in 1963. And soon after that, the um, fiscal court voted to rename the park to AJ Jolly Park in honor of the judge. And these are a few um, photos from the park showing a fisherman on the left, the lake on the right, and then the um, photo of the horse stable as it appeared in 1967 there at the top. And Early in the park's history, they um, made the news when they, when the board raised the prices and fees in 1974, and the sticker fee was raised from one dollar to two dollars, and out-of-state visitors were charged three. Um, in the following year, the park was also honored by the National Association of Counties in Washington, D.C. And this organization selected Campbell County as a recipient of an achievement award for, um, for AJ Jolly Park. And at that time, the park served about 700 visitors daily, and they were developing a fishing pier for handicapped people. And it was said that swimming, boating, and golf contributed to the park's outstanding service to its citizens. And this award was presented at the association's conference, um, which was in Hawaii in June of 1975. And the Red Cross offered um, free swimming lessons for children at the park. And in these photos, um, staff were playing games with the kids at the beginning of a swim class and helping children into their life jackets. And one child, um, there at the bottom, Nikki Guyman was receiving instructions on how to go underwater. And big changes were made to the park in the early 1990s with many improvements. So um, they were getting a new sports complex and um, this would make a total of two soccer fields and six baseball fields. And they also received a paved a golf cart path for the back nine holes and then repairs were made to the front nine. And the 250 acre lake was also stocked with um, catfish by Kentucky Fish and Wildlife personnel. And this photo here shows David Hale um, of Kentucky Fish and Wildlife using a net to 
dump the last of the 5,000 catfish into the water. And the next stop on our exploration of the local parks is Gopal Park on Philadelphia Street in Covington, which is recognizable by its um, German style Carol Chimes clock tower. And um, this display is a mechanical puppet show on the hour. It's named for Covington native and former governor William Goebel, who served only four days in 1900 after being um, wounded by an assassin. And the city purchased the land in 1909. And the photo of the bell tower comes from our Wilma Gillespie collection in Faces and Places. And um, the figurines there on the top. Uh, are pictured as they looked in 1980. And these early photos of the park, or these are early photos of the park and children um, that were enjoying the playground. And in June of 1913, there were new playground areas that were opened. And in celebration, there was also a band concert at the new shelter house. In the summertime, the park's swimming pool was a big attraction for neighborhood children. And in the photo at the top, um, Henrietta Crawling was getting a suntan as other children were enjoying the wading pool. And that was taken in 1978. And um, over the years, the park has also been home for many community gatherings and holiday activities. Um, and there at the top is Matt Williams, who was using a chainsaw to shape one of the reindeer for um, the life-size Santa and reindeer models that were being created from ice. And that was in 1994. And then in December of 1981, um, there are a couple of pictures of a candlelight vigil that was held as people made a procession into a crib in nativity scene. And in the late 1970s and early 1980s, many improvements were made. And this included a path that runs from the swimming pool to a section of the park at, um, that was at 9th and Philadelphia. And um, a child was exploring this path on his bike here when it first opened or when it was first completed in 1983. And along with this, the park was reseeded and a new shelter house was constructed. And um, then the bell tower was completed in 1979. And it was designed by architect Addison Clipson. And in this photo, Mike Hatfield was playing basketball as the tower was still undergoing construction. And overlooking Covington and Cincinnati, Duvue Park has many activities for its visitors, including golf, playgrounds, picnic areas, trails, an amphitheater, and fishing. And this land was donated from the William, from William and Sarah DeVoe to the city to be used for a park in 1910. And um, their farmhouse houses the Beringer Crawford Museum. And the um, Davu Park band shell is a recognizable feature and was built as a works progress administration project during the Great Depression. And that opened in 1939. And a year prior to its opening, um, Grace Balcom, who was a supervisor of the Cincinnati Music Project for the WPA, um, announced in March of 1938 that there were plans that were being made for a series of 20 open air concerts for that summer in the park. And at that time, there was no music project in operation in Kentucky. So Covington officials made arrangements through the Cincinnati WPA section to provide musical entertainment for visitors to the park. And in these photos, um, a view of the band shell from the hillside is shown with people listening to a concert by the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra in 1974. And in the photo to the right, 
um, Carmen de Leon and Studio Big Band were playing a jazz concert at the park. And also in 1938, Davout Park almost had a presidential visit when um, Franklin Roosevelt planned to visit the area as part of a campaign stop for Albin Barkley. And he was managing FDR's New Deal legislation and uh, Barkley's Senate seat was being challenged. So before Roosevelt arrived in Covington, he stopped at Marietta, Ohio to speak. And Colonel Edward uh, Starling, who was chief of the White House Secret Service detail, came a few days early to scout out some spots for um, the president to speak. And the decision was between two locations, the Latonia Racetrack and Davout Park, and Starling ended up selecting the racetrack. And some other performances from our photograph collection include a 1992 performance of the Kentucky Bicentennial, Bicentennial Youth Symphony, the Blue Wisp Big Band in 1991, and um, pictured below on the right was a German music concert in 1980. And for the 1992 summer season, a performance of Shakespeare's A Winter's Tale was put on. And Dee Estridge and Elizabeth Wilson were rehearsing on the left while um, Chuck Estridge, Gina Merrill, and Clint Bramcamp are pictured in the center performing the show. And on the right was Heather Scott preparing for the uh, production. And this show ran from July 11th through the 24th that year. And during its run, um, there was rain every day and Despite the, the dreary weather that they had that summer, they were only rained out a couple of times. Um, and in this slide, there are pictures of a few of the um, activities and events throughout the years. A couple of these include Oktoberfest celebrations at the top um, in the center, is um, at the bottom is a is a um, rotary event. On the right was um, the Northern Kentucky Young Grandmothers Club, a, a group photo from a meeting that they held at the park. And then at the bottom left, there was a um, battle reenactment. These are some photos of kids um, staying busy during a Holmes High School band performance at the park and they were building a stick house and climbing the monkey bars and sled riding have been some other popular activities. And we have many photos in the database of um, winter time at the park and families enjoying sled riding. And Prisoner's Lake in Davout Park is a popular fishing spot, and it's also home to the annual Children's Fishing Derby, which was an event that began around 1980. And this um, first fishing derby at the lake was held for children ages eight through 13. And a couple of these photos show the contestants. Um, one shows the group in the top, um, left photo, the group of contestants, and then um, to the right of that was Jordan Robinson, and she was preparing to cast her fishing pole. Um, and Daniel Turner, who was a nine-year-old contestant, was getting bait on the hook. And to the right of that, um, Doug Biting, 12, who was age 12, um, he was holding up his um, four and three quarter inch fish that he caught during the derby. And I hope you enjoyed this quick glimpse into um, some of the history of our local parks. And for more from our historic photograph collection, please visit our Faces and Places database at facesandplaces.kentlibrary.org. 
And if you have any questions, please send us an email at history at kentonlibrary.org or give us a call at 859-962-4070. Thanks.